guys, it's Rebecca. Today I want to talk to you about some books that I had laying around on my desk. I got them a few months ago. I don't know, they've just sort of been sort of like following me around and I feel like they've been really like influencing my drawing and I've just been thinking a lot about them. Okay, so I'm just gonna put this in here because I'm realizing um, that I'm gonna, there's like some sexual stuff that I'm gonna talk about, not super in detail, but if that you don't like that, and also like zombies and like dead people and sex, and like don't listen if that makes you nervous. Okay, thank you, bye. I mean, I'll just like show you the books first. So the first one was I Am a Hero. The first omnibus just came out from Dark Horse. You can just go online and read like scanlations of it, but they're finally coming out with the actual book in omnibus form, which I'm really glad. So I think there's like sort of the equivalent of like three comics or like three like sort of like sort of volumes of the manga. A friend of mine was visiting New York and we went to the Strand and I had recommended it to her. I recommend this book to like everyone because I'm so obsessed with it. And she was like, oh, isn't this like the zombie book that you like told me to read? And I was like, oh, and I like literally screamed in the middle of the store and like all the people around us jumped and I was like, oh my God. And I was just like, so stoked. And I was like, this is the book that I like love this book. It's so detailed. Um, it's just like one of the best comics I've read in the last few years. And I was just like talking this book up like manically. Um, and we like walked around the store and I was like, oh my God, I just need to buy it. Even though I'd already read it. Um, and so like, I came back and there's like another girl like reading the book and I was like, this is such a good book. And she's like, I know, I heard you. And then later on, I went when we were in line, when I went to go pay for the book, someone was like, oh, that's crazy. Someone was just like a girl just bought this. Like, I should get a commission on that. I'm like selling this book so hard in the Strand. But anyway, it's about um, this comic book artist, a manga artist in Tokyo who sort of finds himself having to survive the zombie apocalypse. He's sort of like a recluse, he's a comic book assistant. He has a dream to become sort of this like great manga artist. And he's in his like, I think 30s, he's approaching 40. And you know, it's one of those things where he's sort of looking around and realizing he's supposed to have done something like bigger, not bigger like at this point. Another interesting thing about the story is that sort of his success in surviving has a lot to do with like his outside interests outside of manga and outside of like this nerd culture he's part of. Like he's really into like the shooting range. He owns a gun, which is like, I guess like very rare in Japan. Like it's very hard to have a gun. And that actually helps him survive it's because he has this tool that like most other people don't have. And it, it, it does get like sort of pushed to the side a little bit, but I like that there's a lot of like that lead up to the zombie outbreak is actually just like you having a look into his life and how He's kind of like a really nice person, but at the same time is is dealing with his own like maybe psychological issues. Like there's all these like weird like hallucinations he has when he like talks to himself. And there's some like bitterness because his girlfriend is friends with her ex, who's apparently this like amazing manga artist. And you know, there's a lot happening. And I think because I'm in a creative industry, I definitely see that with a lot of people around me where we're all like trying to like get ahead and like make this great artwork or just you know have this creative vision be seen by everyone but you know you have to do a lot in between that to make that happen and it's just you know I really relate to that character who's like trying so hard and just hasn't quite hit it yet and I think as a character that's really fun to watch right that he's not really like the hero type but he's just like it's just like a fluke that he survives in some cases this is gonna be a long video as the reader you can see sort of things changing in society that are kind of creepy but because of sort of this artist's like lifestyle and i, I think his name is hero which is like a play on i am hero then you already know going in that it's a zombie story but you can sort of see things slowly changing like things in the background happening on the news or like oh someone got bit by someone but like you don't it's not like the main focus in the beginning and I think it's really funny especially with this first volume of I Am A Hero. If you look at the spine of it there's like this part where it's totally white like it's like very very bright and then there's like it almost in the exact middle it just goes dark and that's because sort of before you totally understand that there's a zombie outbreak they're like sort of all the borders are white and it's very open and airy and then the moment something really creepy happens it turns to dark and all of the margins um 
like it, all the comic becomes full movie. So it goes to the very end, and so it's like becomes such so suddenly like a very dark book. I don't know if it was intentional on Kengo Hanazawa's, like that's what he intended to do, but I think that's an amazing just choice in terms of like a bound book and sort of like how your layout in drawing a comic can sort of change that. So that was really great. I really recommend it if you're into comics or if you're just into like really detailed drawing. Sort of the first thing that I feel like grabs me is just there's so much detail and a lot of times, and I think he's able to pull it off because of that shift for going like a full bleed in terms of the comic when it gets like really dark and you start seeing the zombies. But a lot of times I feel like when there's like hyper detailed uh, drawing in every single panel of a comic, things just slow down. Like it's really hard to feel like excited and like freaked out because I feel like you have so much time to process and you have to like look through every panel. Um, and it just doesn't happen with this one. Like I feel like there's certain things, like I don't know, it's just very horrifying and I never feel like stalled or overwhelmed by the detail, even though there's so much of it. Like there's really no panel in the entire comic that, you know, they're like cutting corners on it. And I know he has like assistants and stuff, but yeah, there's it's so good. I don't think if there's anything else to mention. Um, if you're like a fan of zombies, they, these are like the greatest zombies. Like, like I guess when you get bit by this particular zombie strain, you you become like you don't totally like you're not just like a weird shell. You know, like Walking Dead, like all the zombies are like part of this mass, and you're all like, you know, they're like they're like very old school zombies. Um, and these zombies are all very individualistic. Like you don't become a part of the sort of like zombie herd. The zombie herd doesn't exist. Like every zombie you encounter very much is like their own person. And there's like, it's almost like at the moment they're bitten, like they, they hold on to like one vestige of like what that person's all about in that moment. And there's like some points where it's just like really heartbreaking and kind of beautiful. In the beginning, one of the first zombies that Hero comes across is like, I won't spoil it for you, but it's like really, you're supposed to be horrified, but it's like, he has so much love for this person and they maybe have love for them, but you can't like tell. And yeah, also the zombies are sometimes very funny. And there's like, you're like, la like they're beating a zombie up and it's like, you know you shouldn't be laughing, but <laughs> yeah, so I would, definitely get this. I'm so sad. Like, I don't know. I don't know when the next, I'll like flash when the next Omnibus comes out. And so I had this on my desk for a while. And then I have more recently, I just bought A Girl on the Shore. It's by Anio Asano, the same person who did Oyosumi Poon Poon. Uh, I haven't actually read Oyosumi Poon Poon. For some reason, I'm just like, haven't, I'm just like, I don't quite want to read it. And so this is actually my first book by him that I read. And it's a one shot. And I and it's about the, I think their name is Koume and Keisuke? Yeah, I was right. So this is about sort of a small town and about these two middle schoolers, a girl and a boy, who kind of start this weird relationship. It's a very sexual relationship. And you're not quite sure like what's why they're getting together because they're just like very antagonistic towards each other. It's like interesting there's like this push and pull that keeps happening where they obviously want to get together but they can't quite emotionally get there but they can like sexually and so they hang out with each other and they start this relationship where they almost create this bubble that's just them um, and, it, and they're just kind of working each other's issues out. And I I think I was first drawn to this book not because of the story. Actually, the story, I was not expecting what the story was. The book, like, says, what does it say? When Koume and Keisuke's relationship begins to take shape, it is apparent that they are both searching for something. Maybe Keisuke wants something more than a kiss. Wants something more than a kiss from the fair Koume. Maybe Koume is looking for someone better than Misaki, the local playboy. But what they find in each other over the course of the summer might be far greater than anything they were expecting. Yeah, that sounds like really Disney and nice, right? That sounds like, oh, boy meets girl, it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be... Oh, sorry. Alright, and I really picked it up because the artwork is really gorgeous. It actually reminded me a lot of I Am A Hero. Like, Hanazawa's work is similarly, like, just absolutely detailed and, like, obsessive. And so I really wanted to pick this up for the same reason. When you read it, you're just like, holy shit. Like it's, it's out there. And it's one of those books where I like that it's, it's very sexual. 
it's so sexual. You can't talk about this without talking about the sex, like sexual component of it because it's uncomfortable. It's so uncomfortable because it's two middle schoolers. Like I think they're both maybe 13, like maybe 14 years old and they're sort of like acting out things that they like very adult things and it's something where it's like it feels like their bodies at one point but their mind they, they can't talk about anything that's actually happening a lot of like maybe not really like looking at why they're doing something so i watched these videos by aki dearest who does a lot of like anime reviews and she mentioned it and i think she brought up an interesting point where she talks about how they're like sort of like exploring like sex, but there's like this thing where they don't have the vocabulary for the emotional aspect of it. And they actually do like, you get to the end and I'm like, I think they really do care about each other, but it's like something where they've maybe seen too much of each other too quickly and they don't know how to process that. And just like from the perspective of like drawings, I think it's really interesting where it does seem like all the sex is still happening from like a male perspective. Like you never really see the action happening from Koume's perspective. But there's certain parts of it emotionally that feel very maybe real to the female experience, which I always am a little nervous about sort of giving that credit to male artists because there's certain people who like credit themselves. I, th I think like Miyazaki once said, like he's like, oh my God, I'm like so good at, at writing female characters. And there's another, and like, I think Woody Allen does it too, where Woody Allen's just like, I just have a knack for it. And it's like, first of all, Woody Allen does not have a knack for writing female characters. He's good at like making like really beautiful girly husks and then putting his, stuffing his ideas into them. And they just like vomit them out at him. And the thing is I love Woody Allen movies, but like they're not good female characters. They don't really make sense most of the time. They're all just like sort of like a beautiful harem framework for his like funny sort of musings, but it would be a really boring movie if it was just Woody Allen just walking around talking to himself, like he has to come up with these characters. So it's more like a bunch of like different versions, like female versions of Woody Allen, um, who just act as soundboards for his ideas. Anyway, this did not feel like that because there's certain points, like I think there's like one point where like the first time they get together and they have sex and, Kais and then Keisuke asks Kome, you know, did you have like a good time or like was it good for you? And there's this like thing where she says, like, you know, I'm not actually sure yet and I kind of, and it kind of hurt. And then you like turn the page and it's like, um, what does he say? She says something like, oh, but I'll probably be back tomorrow. But that's like such a good, I don't know, that like really resonated with me, like sort of early sexual experiences when you're young, at least as a woman, at least like from my perspective, I don't want to speak to anyone else's. This idea where it's like, you're like, oh, this like was really weird and I didn't, it did hurt. <laughs> like it wasn't like the greatest experience, um, but there's something in there that I still want and I want to further explore. And so I felt like that, that, that was like a moment where I was like, oh, like, like there's definitely like fetishy aspects of Asano's work, at least in this one, like there's definitely like very specific archetypes, specific facial expressions that he really enjoys um, that feels a little fetishy, uh, but I don't mind that. I think that's definitely an artist's right to put that into their work. Really good read, really interesting. Um, I wanna reread it because I still feel very like, I like spinning out a little bit. And also, I don't know. I guess I like brought up that fetish stuff because I watched, uh, there's these really great, I don't know if you guys are watching the Manben episodes. It's like where um, someone goes in and talks to these manga artists and you just like watch them draw and he like asks questions and there's an Asano episode and it was just really inspiring because he's just so obsessive and he pushed everything like drawing wise that I saw in I'm a Hero and pushed that just to this extreme and just utilizing technology and I don't know maybe I should use this on a different one but I just I've been I've been really feeling that sort of like digging in really hard I don't know sorry there's like a lot of ideas but that's what I've been thinking about lately thank you for listening to my comic rant this is what I'm trying to think of I should probably do like one comic for things I can just talk forever. Um, yeah, so I'll see you guys soon. Yeah. Also, happy summer. Bye.